So turn four out of 12 of scenario 17, the deceived using the solo assistant to control the NATO forces defending against a strong East German attack, which is being supported by the Soviets. Um, these units here are Soviet reinforcements. They are available this turn. They're not on the map yet. They have to enter this east edge of the map and be this hex or farther north when they enter. So they're coming down this road, right? That's where they're coming. This is a pretty big formation of East German infantry, but they are pretty far from their objectives. This is a formation of East German armor, and these are T-72s, which I think are the best tanks that the East Germans have. Those Soviet tanks are T-80s, but uh, I didn't do a great job deploying them necessarily and uh, the American reinforcements have showed up on the map and the East Germans have some of those forces disrupted but for the most part if the East German tanks activate first that will be very fortunate for them and if the American reinforcements here this infantry company activates first it will be very unfortunate for the East Germans and the Americans are trying to defend this bridge. Here's another defensive line the Americans have set up. And they're also trying to defend this bridge. And finally, this bridge. The Soviets have a major victory if they capture all three of those bridges and a minor victory if they capture only two of them. The Soviets have uh, helicopter reinforcements available. The venerable and much feared MI-24 Hind helicopters. They can enter anywhere on the south edge of the map, so they can come in here and try to soften up this American formation, or they can try to make it over here to help out the tankers if they think that the tankers need help. And the Americans have, I forgot to put the American um, wrong thing, the Americans have their Cobra helicopters available. The Cobras come in anywhere on the north edge of the map so they can add to the potential carnage of against the East German tanks here. Um, the Americans ha pilots are very fatigued and only have one formation card whereas the Soviet helicopters have two. Um, as usual NATO will tend to activate more frequently than the Warsaw Pact, although each nation in the Warsaw Pact formation has a designated formation card, which will help them with that. And so, as I said, this area is greatly of interest to me right now. And so let's see who has the first turn. The first turn is the end of operations. Now, we had an unactivated headquarters formation over here, an American formation, so the turn won't end until they activate. And the, uh, the Americans, and yep, that's bad news for these Germans because that is, uh, that is the American reinforcements, part of the 8th Infantry Division that came in here. And so I have to check uh, for command range here, and all of the American forces are in command range. And now I have to draw the uh, a solo assistant card to tell this formation what to do. And let's see what they say. So this card applies to all of the units in the formation, and I am going to play it that the the American units with enemy units in line of sight closest to them will activate first. So this stack of infantry units is adjacent to this uh, unit of Russian tanks. Now, if I were the American commander here, I would be launching an assault immediately. But I don't know if the solo assistant agrees with me. Let's find out. Uh, so... The red priority is for units, enemy units at uh, the closest enemy unit being at point blank or closer range. They are using this. So uh, fire at any player unit or just plain fire. So these 
infantry units here are directed to attack the East German tanks. So that's what they will do. Just because I wouldn't do it that way doesn't mean my way is a good idea. It's often not. So the, um, the American infantry have a couple of anti-tank weapons available to them. And so I'm going to just move this headquarters unit off the hex for now. And uh, I'm going to, oh, just a second, family thing. Okay, we're back. Now, so these are two um, man-portable anti-tank weapon systems. The tow um, is, as I understand, a little bit bulkier and more effective than the, the dragon. The dragon is sort of a version of the bazooka. So the first unit that's going to fire is the unit that's stacked with the headquarters, and it is going to deploy this tow system. So the tow would throw, would roll four dice needing fours. The headquarter bonus gives it two dice needing fours, needing two extra dice, so that's six. And being at point blank range, that makes threes. So this is going to be a very brutal moment for those East German tanks, as they're going to have six dice needing a three or higher to score a hit. And let's see what happens. Oh yeah, uh, that is six hits. So the armor, each, uh, each of these tanks gets three dice needing fives to save. So they do, they've got a chance of saving some of these hits, but that's going to be tough. So the first tank will roll its three dice and it saves none. And the second tank saves one. So the first tank in the stack is a casualty. It's disrupted, reduced, and eliminated. And I'm going to have to put a wreck marker there. Let me see if I can leave a wreck marker behind. Hey, look, wreck vehicle. And it moves it right to, wow, they did a great job on this module. So this unit is going to suffer two hits. And uh, so they're going to be disrupted and also reduced and but they are still alive now the infantry ah you know i can't remember in this game if the infantry is also able to fire using its own firepower let me check that out so yes the infantry is allowed to also attack using its own firepower and it was ordered to do so if this was an opportunity fire that would not be the case that's what is going on in this game so the infantry with uh it in the upper left corner that's its armor piercing firepower so i guess they're throwing grenades and such out there uh two dice needing fives to hit and there we go, and they scored a hit, and now the reduced armor still gets its three saves, uh, and three dice for saves, and fails to save. So this vehicle is also wrecked, and uh, that was well done by this American infantry unit and their leadership. So that unit is ops complete. The unit uh, on the bottom of the stack still has the opportunity to fire. And now I wish I had deployed the support weapons differently. This would still be a point blank shot for the toe. For the dragon, it is not point blank. But I believe the intention of the fire card is to try to do as much damage as possible. So I'm going to bring this out here and deploy it to this infantry unit which will take a shot with this. It, this. This unit does not have the headquarters stacked, so the dragon is going to roll three dice needing fours. Scores two hits, and so we'll say it's firing at the top unit. It rolls three dice needing a five or higher to save, and it saves one of those hits. So one of these tanks is disrupted. I'm going to make it the bottom unit because it'll be easier later when this formation activates. And the last American infantry unit here is ops complete. 
So, and the headquarters is going to go right back there, right back there. And, okay, so that outfit is done. Now, what other American units have line of sight? Uh, this unit does, this infantry unit has line of sight, and this Bradley does. I think that, and these Bradleys up here, do they, can they, I don't think they can, no, they're going, they're shooting through the town, so they're, they don't see these tanks here. But this Bradley does, and this Bradley is going to fire, and the shot that it's going to take, uh, Bradleys, I, as I said, are tough as nails, it's going to, it's got a tow missile system as well, it's going to shoot four dice needing fours and point blank range makes it four dice needing threes only one hit and so the east germans get three dice needing fives plus one defense die for the tree so a total of four dice needing fives and they effectively save against that attack so the bradley is ops complete now this american unit again the the instructions were to fire i i love assaulting but i've got to say I, i'm not sure that assaulting here is a very great idea uh they would get two dice needing fours the good news for them would be that they get a bonus so it'd be two dice needing threes but they would also get fired back at by four dice needing fours uh, and any hits would be applied. So I'm just going to follow the, the orders as they were dictated on the card. And this um, unit is going to fire um, uh, two dice needing fives. And it is not at point blank range here can, for, as an anti armor attack. It's at the only range it can be. And so here goes. And then they're going to be sitting there in a plowed or in a wheat field or something. All right, two dice. And they missed, so they're now ops complete. So now we will start to see what the solo assistant says about um, units not in line of sight. And I, I forgot, I need to roll to see if the disrupted Bradley here is rallied or not. Training morale check, and it failed, so that unit is disrupted. So let's look back at the case. So we have a Bradley that has yet to act, and we have the anti-aircraft vehicle, the Chaparral, and we have the self-propelled mortar. Now, the self-propelled mortar could potentially be ordered to fire. Let's look at the card. Um, it looks like they don't say anything about... Um, it doesn't have anything in here about firing indirect attacks, either on or off board. So the mortar's not going to fire here. So let's start with that Bradley, the disrupted Bradley. Um, the, uh, the, the disrupted to a VO. Not sure what that means, a VO. A victory objective. Oh, if there's a disrupted unit closest to a victory objective um, if not in zero defensive benefit move towards cover so so yeah that makes sense a disrupted unit would want to move towards cover right so they're not allowed to move closer to an enemy unit that they have line of sight to and so if they come to this hex here Will they see these tanks? They will not. If they come to this hex here, though, they will see these tanks. So when you're disrupted, you cannot move closer to an enemy. And if you move into the line of sight of an enemy, you have to stop. So there will be no cover for them because they will move here and have to stop upon spotting these tanks here. So they can't get to this tree. Um, being up a hill does count as uh, cover of a sort. You, you have a defensive bonus into that terrain, but they would be subject to opportunity fire from these tanks, and that would not be good at all for a light-skinned armored vehicle like the Bradley. So I'm going to make a judgment call and say that they feel like they're under pretty good cover right here. Oh, another family demand. Hold on. All right. I think I was saying that I think this disrupted unit is considering itself to be in good enough cover. Now, 
the undisrupted Bradley. Let's look at the solo card and see what it says. It has no enemies in its line of sight, and so uh, it's not disrupted. And it otherwise, if it's not in a zero defensive bonus, it should move towards cover. So it's a similar situation here. A move. Oh well, you know what? Look at this. Um, can't it can't move here because that unit is stacked. Moving towards cover could put it here in the woods. It would be vulnerable to uh, opportunity fire from either the undisrupted tank here or one of these tanks here. And the idea of getting shot at at point blank range by a T-72 doesn't seem like the it doesn't seem to be obeying the spirit of the move to cover order, I don't think. I think that what that means is try to get yourself in a safe position where you can better defend yourself. So I'm going to again say that that unit is going to consider itself to be in a pretty good spot. Now these two units up here, the mortar and the, um, the mortar and the anti-aircraft unit, they could actually move here into cover. Uh, if they did that, they would be in range of an attack from this anti-aircraft unit, which they don't really have to worry too much about. But it would put them in line of sight for something like helicopter attack. So it's probably not a great idea for them to really move either, especially the anti-aircraft unit that wants to be able to fire at the helicopters if possible. And so being marked ops complete wouldn't be good. But, you know, with that in mind, if they were up on this hill, that hill would give them cover, right? It would give them a elevated terrain defensive bonus, and it would ensure that they were able to take a crack at helicopters if they got reactivated and were not ops complete. So I'm overthinking this, right? I think that what the solo assistant is telling the formation to do in this case is attack if you have targets of opportunity. Otherwise, uh, keep yourself in cover so that you do not become a casualty. And so I'm going to leave all of these units here. I think that's the right thing to do. Yeah, what do you think? Is that a good interpretation of the solo assistant's intent here? Am I even reading it correctly? All right, let's see what the next formation to come to play is. And it is the American... B3 of the 8th Infantry Division. They are down here on this hill. And they have range and line of sight and weaponry that enable them to engage some different targets here. Well, at least to engage these targets. So, and it's not, it's daylight now, by the way. Um, it is, uh, dawn has broken. So, let's draw a card and see what the orders for this formation are. Here we go. Um, so if there's any unit within uh, point-blank range of the unit, if they're disrupted, they're supposed to do a low-risk move, which is defined in the rules, basically make sure you don't get shot. And I maybe, maybe the fact that um, this did not say low-risk move, it just said move towards cover, maybe I should have interpreted that more strictly. But woulda, coulda, shoulda. So, um, yeah, so if disrupted, low risk move. If not, fire to a point blank range unit. Now, let's take a look here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that is not point blank for the Abrams or for the Dragon. In fact, it's long range for the Dragon. So, let's see what it Solo system tells us to do in that case. A fire at the closest vehicle or low risk move away. So closest vehicle is one of these two tanks. So the Abrams is going to go ahead and take it shot and it has the headquarters stacked with it. So it's rolling six dice needing a five to hit. Here we go. That's three hits. That's pretty good. So this tank has its own three dice plus the Defensive die for the four, so it gets four needing fives to try to save those three hits. 
and it saves one of them. So the tank takes two hits. It becomes disrupted and reduced. And that is not good for that uh, for that tank. And now, uh, so the Abrams is marked ops complete. The infantry, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's a long range shot for the dragon. Again, I'm interpreting this to say take the shot. So the long range shot makes it three dice at five. I hope I'm getting that right. Uh, Let's see what it says about long range shots. Um, it doesn't have any of that in these. It doesn't talk about that in any of these player aids. There's a different player aid that it does. Talk about that. I don't think it's any of these. Yeah, it's not. So. Let me quickly dive into the rules, and I'll be right back. Yeah, I was right. Plus one to hit, so they're going to take uh, three dice and need fives to hit. And they're going to fire at the good order tank. And, oh, two hits. Nicely done. So also four die, needing fives to save, and all of those hits were saved. So, uh, yeah, see, you can't can't right click on units if the headquarter is there to make them all ops complete. You got to move the headquarter off, no problem. Now I've got to make the missile reload roll for the infantry to see how they did with that. They failed by 1, but they get the no, they don't get the command benefit. So they are Reloading missiles. Now, does this, is that programmed in here? Yeah, look. Got them. Reloading. All right. So, there are no other units from this formation that have line of sight. Uh, let's see what the... It's saying the highest firepower um, AEO farthest from a disrupted unit should fire. That doesn't apply. Highest firepower AEO farthest from the highest firepower unit doesn't apply. Uh, none of them have. Uh, it says uh, so the highest firepower from the highest firepower enemy unit should make a low risk move towards that movement. Um, so, you know, I'm going to. So this. This ITV here, <coughs> I think that that might have been an order given to make a low-risk move to get closer. But I'm going to stick with my initial assessment that these are good defensive positions, and that's not going to move right now. Uh, also of note, um, there is nothing on this card about um, indirect fire. And so the headquarters is not calling in mortar fire here, which is too bad. A little bit of mortar fire in one of these sexes could make a big difference. But that's not happening. And so we are going to go ahead and pull the next card, but probably I'm not going to finish this formation right now. Oh, it's the same formation. All right, so we'll, we'll do that again. So let's get these... Ops complete markers out of here. And let's make the missile reload roll here. They fail again. Now, let's look at the player aid and see what the consequence of that is. Um, Uh, this is not the one I need. This is the one I need. So it's a support weapon, anti-tank guided missile manned by infantry. If the missile reload attempt fails, you leave the missile reloading marker on the unit, and if it succeeds, you take it off. So they are not, they're not ever out of ammo. They just dropped the reload or something. 
Um, but the Abrams is going to fire again. It's going to fire the good order tank in this hex. And it's got its same six dice uh, needing fives. And that's two hits. So this tank has its same four dice needing fives to save. And so, wow, as I feared, the East German armor is getting chewed up pretty badly here through kind of poor planning and execution on my part. Uh, so, once again, these units are... I just got to keep moving the headquarters, I think. These units are now ops complete. I could do that with a keyboard shortcut. Maybe that's what I should be trying to do. And uh, again, I'm going to leave the rest of the formation alone. We're going to check that new card and see. Um, oh, I, ah, gosh, I didn't draw a new card. Let's see if everything I just did is what I was supposed to do. Yeah, basically the same. Um, but again, nothing about uh, indirect fire. So the mortar is just kind of sitting there waiting. All right, let's see what the next formation to activate is going to be. And it is the uh, the now somewhat brutalized East German tank formation. And so I am going to hold off on executing their formation impulse.